within 3D, 2Ds we have workflows, and 3Ds you also have workflows, but often you'll hear, hear the word pipeline. Don't worry, I'm not going to do the entire course like this. We're going to look at some software and look at examples, and we're going to go through some things. But I thought it was important in the very beginning to, to take a look so that you can get an overall idea because there's just so much software out there. And what do you pay for? What do you not pay for? What is exactly like this other piece of software? These are, these are very big questions that we're going to answer. So our, let's, let's just say that we want to start with, you have an idea. You have an idea and maybe you want to make your own 3D animated cartoon. Well, from here, from the idea, maybe you want to, maybe you got some stuff written down, got a few pages done. From writing this stuff down, you write some things down and you want to create, maybe you got an idea and you got a character. It's your character right there. And so now you got an idea and you got a few characters. It's going to be your cartoon. Well, your animated movie. So you got these characters and you get yourself an artist or maybe you're an artist yourself and you got care, you got your main character, you got your cast. And maybe you've even gotten some environments. Maybe you got a few sketches done. And that's cool. But we want to animate this. So, so now what do you do? Well, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to take all of this. And we want to make this to a 3D, let's just say movie. Well, all these characters from here, it's always a good idea. Let's start with our character. Our character right here, we want to probably do some sort of turnaround, which means front, side, and a back view. Because what we want to do is we want to take that turnaround And we want to model it into a 3D model. This is 3D. I'm putting all these lines on here. We want to turn this into a 3D model. So now we have a model. We have a base model. And there are a few different ways to do this, but now we have a model. And now we want to model some environments in 3D. So I'm just going to do this because this is kind of representing our 3D environment. So we have this. We got some environments and then we eventually want to put, we eventually want to put the character inside of that environment. And after we put the char character inside the environment, well, it's a 3D movie, so we need to actually do what's called rigging that character if we want to make it move, because right now it's just standing there. It doesn't do anything, right? So we want to put a rig. There's this little skeleton. We want to rig this. So we rig. So we got model. This is another model. And maybe say this is our test shot. We rendered that little test shot out of our character standing in the environment, but we got to make a move, so we have to rig it. And then from rigging, this character is now going to move. There's our character moving. Yay, character's moving. And after you rig it, that means that you animate it. It's a lot to it, and I'm and I'm very much simplifying simplifying this. 
So within, so we're animating. There's all other kinds of stuff that we got to deal with. Like we got to light it. We got different kinds of lights that we can use. And that's just get, getting into a little bit of the animation. So that's one basic, basic pipeline. But if we look at this model, there's some other things we got to do here. We got to add some sort of texture onto it because the model, this is just a plain looking model. Uh, we got to add some color to it. We got to get color. We may have to add clothing. We're gonna have to add hair. And there are other various textures that we can add. Now, the way that we wanna model this, if it's for a game or it's animated, as of now, because Unreal Engine seems to be changing a lot of things, and yes, you can make movies in Unreal Engine, um, you can have, you can either polygon Polygon model it is what you're going to need to do. Or initially you'll probably need to sculpt it. So 3D sculpt it. So there's polygon modeling. And that's when you hear about things like poly count. You also hear it there too. But 3D sculpting is more likely what's called high res which means high resolution and high resolution trying to animate that you just you you cannot so you can 3d sculpt something and have three million polygons but you can't animate that you can't put it into a video game so your pipeline is your process your workflow your pipeline is what happens next and this is just an example so with that said, just to give you an overview, there are many different things that you can do when it comes to 3D. You can use 3D for reference if you're a 2D artist. You can also use it for your backgrounds if you're a 2D artist. Backgrounds, characters, creatures and I said reference but it's also can be photo reference right you can animate you can make movies you can make TV television shows and that by TV I do mean like whatever now whatever streaming service it is you can make games You can do commercial work, meaning you actually can make commercials with 3D. There's also different parts of 3D like visual effects. There's compositing, putting everything together. And you can also mix live action with 3D. So it's a very big topic and more than likely, more often times than not, someone will specialize in something. Someone will just do lighting. Someone will just, and these, when you get to these bigger companies, this person is in charge of lighting, maybe color. This person does modeling. This person is an animator. And they may just be in charge of animating one character. So there's a lot going on with 3D. And this isn't even getting into some of the other things that, I, that I'll show you that different softwares can do. There's all kinds of things. There's all kinds of crime scene recreations. There is crime reenactments. There are simulations that you can run there there's 3d is such a huge broad topic but i'm suspecting that most of you are here because you more than likely want to 
make some 3D models. Probably you either want to make some sort of show, TV, movie, or you want to make a video game. And so we're going to stick to those tools and stick to those things. This is not about AutoCAD, which is also 3D, because I am not an architect. With that said, what I want to do is jump in to the very next to the very next video and just explain the basic concept that that almost all of this is made out on made out of with polygons and polygon modeling so uh, i'll see you in the next video we'll do another quick little blackboard video here on the polygon modeling so that you can understand and then i'm going to show you an example see you in the next video so back in the day when you were a kid we had dot to dot little activities and you would connect the dots right you would connect the dots and then you would make a picture now if I did this and said I want you to connect these dots well all of these right here well these are dots and in order to make a dot you make a line you make another line and you make another line you make another line and this is well this is a square now we can make this any shape that we want right and let's say that after you collect connected the dots you colored it in Well, this is pretty much the same concept as polygons and polygon modeling. Except, we can now do this. We are connecting, we are using lines, we're using dots to connect one dot to another dot to make a line. And our lines are going to make up surfaces. Now, this is a box, as you can see. But then, if I want to take it to the next level, let's say that now... I want to make it look like a pair of dice. And so I would have to put a dice, a, a dice material over it to make it look like something other than a very plain, then to make it look like a very plain box. Or I can make it into any other kind of thing I want. I can make this in, can make this basic shape into a crate. For a video game. If I connect a bunch of them together, I can make other different things with it. Now, the interesting thing about these dots, this, these dots are called, this is a vertex, or you will see vertices these lines are called edges because they are defining an edge now if we put these together this surface are planes they're also called faces so that is the basics of polygon modeling. Now, I know that there is voxel modeling, but I've yet to try voxel modeling. Most things are polygon modeling. Even when you get into sculpting software, you're just working with smaller polygons. And so you'll, you'll see things to where it's, it's very interesting that when you are polygon modeling, 
you want everything to be what are called quads, meaning there are four sides, four sides, four edges. So they don't have to be like that. They could be four sides that look like that. They could be four, as long as they're four sides, because for some strange reason, when you go to export things or import things into different game engines or you're going to animate something, they split the quads in half. So that's a quad. They split them in half to make triangles. So tries, triangles. And so when you are cutting polygons, you always want to cut them in half because you want to keep your polys clean. That is the basic concept of a polygon. In the next video, I am going to open up a piece of software called Blender and I'm going to show you that in real time. I will see you in the next video. So this is Blender and this is actually Blender 3.0. I have to update this to Blender 3.2, which we are going to be doing and Blender keeps updating a lot, which is good. Now all of this looks really, really, really super scary. We're not gonna worry about any of that, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna hit Shift A. I'm gonna create what's called a mesh. And there's a bunch of different meshes that I can have, but in order to keep this really, really simple, I want to create, let me see what I want to create here. I don't want the rock generator. There we go. <laughs> I was wondering what happened to that. Uh, I am going to create a cube. So here we go. This is a 3D cube. Now, if I go up here, this is called a gizmo. I'm going to go over all of this stuff in great detail. Do not worry. But as you can see, we can look through this and see. This is our cube. Now, if I go to this wireframe view, you can see it's in ob what's called object mode, and you can see the lines here. You can see the edges here. I go, wait a minute, you said there were vertices here. If I go into edit mode, if I zoom in, there are these little dots. Now we can make these bigger if we want. As a matter of fact, let me do this for clarity's sake. All right, so I went in and I enlarged the vertices so that we can see them a lot clearly. So even up in here, right up there where it says vertex select. So this means that I can select these vertexes. Now you will also notice for some of you that work in 2D, you notice that there's this little select arrow right here where I can select things. Now I can see all the way through this. These are my vertexes. If I want to select this edge here, then I would click the next button, the next little button up here. I'm not going to try and memorize any hotkeys. And I'm selecting these edges, the lines. Now if I want to select the faces, it's, it's giving me this little prompt where I have these little dots and I just select this and it is selecting the faces. So if I just select on these little dots, it's going to select the face. And so these are polygons. And if I manipulate these through different means, because I'm in the editing mode here, then I, so if I want to do this, and I'm doing this with a mouse, by the way, I don't have my, uh, my stylus because I, I honestly think it's a, it's harder to model with a stylus than it is a mouse. Although I always tell my students, if you're going to sculpt, get a stylus and a tablet. And especially if you're going to do 2d art, you cannot draw with the mouse. You can, but you can't. And so there you go. So now I just modeled something. It's not much. I just did a little inset there. 
And yes, there are hotkeys. So I go E, I go Z, I can extrude that. I can actually lock it to the Z. So I just made a little model, we changed it. So now what's going on is that I have way more polygons. All of these different polygons. I have all these different faces now. So that's a face, that's a face like we had before. But now if I zoom out, that's a face. If you look right up in here, that's another face. So is that one and so on. So these are polygons and this is how you essentially model. Now there's different ways to view. This is the viewport. We can look at it. This is the solid shading mode right next to it. There's a material preview though we really don't have materials on it right now but we can and over here this is the rendered mode meaning it's going to do some rendering and do its best to make it look as nice as possible now I'm in edit mode also you actually want to be in object mode so now you're like wait a minute that looks totally different there are no lights or anything So this is a polygon. This is what everything is made out of with these little squares here. Everything. And so let's see. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I have to, uh, I got to update my library here, which I got to do that later on. Uh, but we can see, so I'm going to open up something for you guys really quick. Then I'll uh, get out of here. Let me pause real quick. Okay, so what we see here, this is a base mesh. This figure right here. This figure is a base mesh. So I'm going to get rid of this. So I'm going to zoom in here. Now, if it comes in, it looks like this. You guys have probably seen something like this before. Why is it called a base mesh? It is a base that you can make your characters. I can sculpt on top of this. I can polygon model these. I can manipulate these with the, by polygon modeling. I can smooth this out and sculpt my own character on top of it. But where do I get the word mesh from? Well, a mesh is like a net. And many times these 3D models referred to as 3d meshes and if you said 3d model somebody no one will look at you like what what are you talking about there these are meshes but if we zoom in now if we zoom back out this looks pretty solid but if we zoom in and this is our more this is almost always called wireframe view because it looks like a series of wireframes if we turn this around now this base mesh you can see that all of these, these are a bunch of little quads. They're not perfect squares, but they all have four sides to them. Uh, and let's, let's, uh, if we zoom in to this area over here, let's go into edit mode here. So I'm looking at this particular quad right here. This is a quad that has four sides. So does this, so does that. If I zoom out and just pick something at random, everything that I'm highlighting is gonna have four sides. And this is refer often referred to as clean geometry. They want it to be clean because all of these, I can run a diagonal line through it and create triangles which I believe it just makes it easier for different uh, animation and production software to process. Now, I don't know all the exact science of it, but I know that when your polygons, when your polys are not quads, meaning four sides, then you're gonna get distortion, you're gonna get these glitchy looking figures, and that's what's gonna happen. Let's go back into object mode 
And so this would be a rendered view and there's no lighting in there. So there's really nothing to render because I didn't add any lights. So that is an example of a polygon. So you can see that this is a polygon. It's, it's a little bit more elaborate than a box, obviously, but it's made out of the same things. This is how we get 3D modeling. Even if we go into a very complex piece of software like ZBrush, and I don't know if this mesh is gonna let me sculpt over it. Let's find out. So let me sculpt a little bit, that's cool. So now I just sculpted over this, right? I didn't add up enough whatever, but I just kind of sculpted. This is very low poly. And so that's that's horrible. <laughs> like something out of uh, The Last of Us or something. But if I go back into wireframe mode, you can see that I distorted this. And so I would want to take this and I would want to add, uh, probably remesh that to make it a little bit cleaner. Oh, don't worry, you'll you'll figure out, well not figure out, I'm gonna tell you what all that stuff is. So this is an example of polygons and how they make up pretty much everything in 3D. All right, hope you learned something. I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna see you in the very next video. So your first assignment is to go to blender.org and download Blender. I'm going to talk you through it. Do not go to blender.com unless you want to buy a blender. I mean, if you do, that's cool. I'm not judging you. I have two blenders. I have a very expensive Vitamix and uh, I have another one. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for blenders. I am all for fresh fruits and vegetables being consumed by human beings. It's good stuff. Uh, but... That's neither here nor there. You want to go to blender.org. Uh, because I, I, I did that because I know someone's going to go to blender.com. Like, oh, I went to blender.com. There's no software there. You're a terrible teacher. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go to blender.com. Now, you're probably looking at this. Now, depending on when you're looking at this, I should say this could say 3.3. This could say 3.4. So let's look at what's on the horizon. So I'm going to go here. I don't want you to download anything just yet. I want to go to where are they? Development updates open source. Blender's an awesome community, by the way. And then I'm going to show you everything. Some of the things that Blender can do. They got it right on the website, which is awesome. So let's go to download. We're going to go to the download page. Now, what I am going to do. It's a, this is the current version of Blender. That's what we want to download, whatever the current version is. That's download. This is the other download. So I am looking for what is on the horizon because Blender is very good about builds. Now, you're like, what is a build? What is a build? So check this out. So you can download it for Windows, for Mac, and for Linux. So my Linux peeps out there, don't worry, you can download Blender. So right now, when it says release candidate, you're wondering why there are so many of these. Well, some people started working on their projects at Blender 2.83, and they don't want to go ahead and they don't want to go to the brand new version of Blender. So we are going to download 3.2 right now. It is July 4th as I'm recording this, 2022. This is the newest release candidate. We can download this. If you're on a Mac OS, you can get a, there's a preview where it says alpha. It's not in beta yet, just like any other software. Also, there appear to be different versions for if you have an Intel Mac, which I still have an Intel MacBook. I also have a PC. Obviously, I'm on a PC. But there's also an Apple Silicon version. So that's also important to know. So the alpha is still being tested. We want to download the latest uh, in Linux. It's the same thing. So 3.3 is going to be the next version that's going to be released. But if we go to the main page, it says download 3.2, the Windows installer. 
So what we're going to do, that's what I have. I have the Windows installer. I'm going to download this. And it says, you are breathtaking. Now it's downloading. And you're going to download it like you do anything else. And they got some stuff up here. Learn the basics. Uh, Pablo, who is, uh, I think it's Pablo Navarro, who's awesome, does a weekly uh, live stream telling you about all the new stuff that's coming up and everything. That's why the community is so amazing. And there are so many tools for Blender. That is why many people use it. Okay, so I've downloaded this. And also, just to let you know, well, what can Blender do? Well, with Blender, Blender has its own ecosystem and all the other stuff. Uh, there's a render engine. Don't worry about that. Modeling and sculpting UV. I showed you a little bit of that. You can do VFX. You can also animate and do rigging, meaning you're going to put a skeleton inside the animation. You can do 2D and 3D art, or you can draw 2D and 3D with grease pencil. My own personal take is that I'm not, I'm not hugely a big fan of grease pencil. I think there are just other pieces of software that just do some things a little bit better. But that's just my own opinion. And also, you can write your own scripts for Blender, as many people do. There are lots of resources. We'll get into that. This is not a Blender course, but I do want you to download it to perhaps get over some of your fear of Blender. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit pause. I'm just going to click on and I'm going to open this up. So I'm going to hit pause. So I just remembered something as I was going to install it because I didn't want to hang up uh, the recording of this. But I do think that this is important because this does pop up and I'll show you what I'm just going to hit pause one more time and we're going to and I got to go get it's in my download folder. Okay, so now here we go. So I want to show you guys something. And hopefully this will okay, so I'm going to accept the terms. The next I go next. And I'm going to hit install. Watch watch this so because I know this may freak some people out, especially being new to 3D. We're just going to wait. It's going to, it's going to take a second. And I'll give you guys my, my specs on everything. So check this out. So you see that? That looks really, it, it may look a little fishy to you. Like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What is this? Why doesn't it say Blender.msi? I don't know why, but that's how Blender uh, uploads. It's, very, it's a verified publisher, Stitching Blender Foundation. Uh, do you want to make changes? You, may even, you might even get a security warning. But it does look really strange like that. So it's going to hit yes. And we're going to install it. We're, we are going to install Blender. It's not going to break anything. You're not going to hurt anything. And so I'm just going to let it finish un uninstalling. And I'm just going to pause because I don't want it to take all day. Okay, so you're seeing my secret desktop here. Uh, you can see I got a little icon right here. I'm going to click on to my icon. Oh, wait, now it's opening on my second screen. It's opening on my other screen here. I got to bring this up here. So now we're just going to download it. We're not going to do anything right now because we want to, I just want to have Blender set. I just want to have this there. It looks super intimidating, but English, that's my first language. Shortcuts will leave everything as is. Spacebar play, don't worry about that. I have Blender dark. I'm just going to say save. New. Now I can load 3.0, but we're not. I'm just going to have everything the same way that you guys will have it. This looks really small. I am on a 2K monitor, so don't worry about that. I'm just going to save new settings. And it gives us a little menu up here, general, 2D animation, open, manual, and all this other stuff. I'm just going to click off of it. We have a camera. We have our little camera. We have the cube. It's default. And we have a light. The reason why we have a light is that when we go under render view, now, my viewport looked a little bit different there, and we're, we're going we're gonna, to just going to show you some stuff in here, but not right now. Again, beginner 3D course, I want to give you guys the bigger picture of everything because I think it's important for you to see a variety of software. All right, I'm going to stop talking. 
this was assignment one. Just download Blender. Don't do anything yet. Please don't do anything. This can this software can be so complicated. And I, in in right down here in the corner, in the very corner, it'll say three point two. Now where this where my little this is the the uh, <laughs> my cursor. If I go way down into the bottom right corner, it's going to say 3.2.0. That's the version that I have. That means that it is the most stable version of Blender. All right, I'm going to stop talking and I will see you in the next video. So this is Godot Game Engine. Now, in the beginning, I said I'm going to, uh, we're going to download it for fun and everything, but we're not. <laughs> Uh, now, I've not heard, now, I've done the investigation on this because I wanted to check out Godot Game Engine, but I got this. Windows protected your PC. Now, I have never really heard of of too much of people having any sort of, of Godot having a virus. It's open source. However, since it is open source, we're just not going to risk that for our our uh, PCs. I'm going to down. I already I already have Unreal Engine 5 and I'm just going to talk you through some of that stuff there. Uh, I may even have to uh, well which you probably have already seen me saying hold off on downloading Godot Engine. Uh, so uh, yeah it just so I'm not going to risk this so I'm just going to like this it seems like it would be very cool and very, it's a very simple user interface. However, uh, I don't feel comfortable with downloading this, so I am just going to delete the file. Sometimes you, and, and I'm being transparent about that because this is the kind of stuff you will run into. If you don't feel comfortable with anything that you are going to download, then don't. <laughs> don't do it, even if you look it up and people are like, oh, well, it's a false positive or just don't, use your common sense. I'm sure that Godot is fine. I'm sure that there is nothing wrong with it. But again, I don't feel comfortable with it. And I don't feel comfortable by telling you this uh, or by having you download something, especially when we can just use Unreal and you could just follow along by watching the videos. So I wanted to make this video and I'm probably going to put this in the very beginning of my uh, probably in the very beginning of the course to say we're not going to download this. All right. So there you go. So this is my introduction to teaching you many of the basics of the pipeline through this all in one solution that's absolutely free. Yes, Unreal Engine is free. However, there it's not as easily explained. Daz Studio has been free for a long time. Well, since its beginning, as far as I know. And I've been a Daz Studio user in one form or fashion since 2014. Maybe even earlier than that. So with that said, what I, and I think it have been earlier than that, but uh, this is their hub that you can download things from. It's called Daz Central. And let me just give you a little bit of an explanation here. If we go to Daz 3D. So this is the website and free, free 3D software suite meaning it is a collection of other things. It's all in one, but it can do a few different things, or at least it tries to. Uh, it does some things pretty well, and other things just doesn't do as well, or as fast, I should say. So let's take an overview of what this is so that we can have a much stronger understanding when, when we dive in, and because I think this is the most accessible way to get you started in 3D. All right, so if we take a look at this, they have there's a series of what are called bridges, which allows you to transfer things from objects from this software, objects, models, what have you, and export them a lot easier to other to other programs or to other apps or however you want to 
however you want to put that in there. And so we have you can have you have people and wearables, essentially characters and clothing that are already pre-made animals and creatures. There's some places and things animation and poses so it can do some animation and add-ons and resources. You can download it for free. And as you can see here, all your assets in one place, our content manager, DAS Central. Now, I was having some issues before uh, because I was using the DAS install manager, which is an older system, and I've since updated it, and I was not getting the warnings or whatever that I had before. So I downloaded DAS Central. I have a fresh copy of DAS for those of you that want to follow along. I don't have any of my content installed, just to let you know just so we're all on the same page. It's got some rendering presets in there, uh, animation made easy, and I will kind of go over their animation and you can pose things and modify them. So and they also like to give you a lot of examples of what you can do with DAS Studio. Uh, there's an NFT section. I know people get have very strong opinions about NFTs. I don't have an opinion on it. It's not something that I've necessarily looked into just yet. Uh, I, I have a general idea, but they are talking about DAS NFT and, and things like that. So I think time will tell. Uh, I'm not with it either, either for nor against it. Uh, and so if we look, there's a community gallery. So you can see these images were made with pre-made assets. Now, people do know things like photographs and, and or people know photography and there's lighting and there's a lot of other stuff. So like this image is created with Das Studio. And so when you see something like this, this reminds me of maybe a novel cover or something like that. And, and as a matter of fact, once you see the Das models and once you look at how Das Studio looks, you will always be able to tell when you are seeing a DAS model. And I want to show you, to, to really get in and show you that, okay, she's not a real person. And this is also not really a digital painting. I think they probably put a filter over it and did some kind of painting. But, oh, and look, sci-fi novel. So this is done with uh, with novel, with for a sci-fi novel. So in, So for those of you that you might be a writer, I don't know, you could be you could uh this image is amazing uh that's really great and the models have gotten better over the years but if you guys are like novelists you can put together your own some of your own images if you can't really afford to hire out an artist and you want a certain look to it this course is not about that but yeah there you go so uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to just kind of get out of there and so i've downloaded das central so DAS Central, it's got DAS Studio, so it's another little overview. Hey, welcome to DAS, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to click on my assets, meaning all of the things that I have bought from DAS. Now, DAS itself is free, and they're going to give you some different kinds of assets, but you have to buy things from there, and it's the prices vary. They don't vary wildly, but they vary. So, if, and I've been, and keep in mind, I've had this for a long time. So, uh, these are some of the assets that I have. And so I could probably do this because I don't like the way the other one looks. So I can download all of this stuff right here because I bought all of this stuff over the years. And I'm talking years. I didn't just buy this one day, uh, and just <laughs> just buy all this. This is this is thousands of dollars worth of stuff, if not tens of thousand dollars worth of stuff that I've bought over the years, over the years. So I, I just I do want to emphasize that. But there there are starter essentials, and in order to explain everything, I don't need anything other than the starter essentials. And I think I should be able to type this in. As with any sort of search function on software, whoops, we learned how to spell starter. Okay, so I have Genesis Starter Essential. Genesis is the name of the DAS Studio model, and I'm gonna get this. The current version, as of this recording, is Genesis Eight. 
they went from Genesis 3 to Genesis 8. So there's no Genesis 4, 5, 6, or 7. They just went from 3 to 8. I, I don't know why. Uh, there was Genesis 2 and Genesis 1. Now, if you have if you buy some older content, you may need some of the older models. Uh, but they're trying to retrofit everything. And DeForce is its own other thing. So I can just hit install. And let's see, there's some resources here. Let me see, plugins, my assets. Let's go in. I'm not quite sure if there is, if they're still doing a starter bundle. Let's just look at starter content. Maybe that changes something. No starter content. Uh, let's go in. We, there are some external links. It's going to open up the store. Let's look up here for starter content. Again, going to take my time with everything. So doesn't look it, I think just the starter Genesis bundle. It's really all you're going to need because it's essentially the figure with a few pieces of clothing and it's enough to explain everything. So if you don't have it, then you can just download it. Uh, it's it shows that I that I have this purchase because apparently I'm logged in there. There's a lot of stuff in here. And so then <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I can just go over here. Double click on to here. Wait for this to start up. I was getting a CMS warning content manager system. It wasn't loading my content manager it wasn't loading my content because if we look over here now I don't we're gonna go through this so don't worry content uh, my smart content this is all grayed out I can download it from here as well but none of this was showing up because it wasn't hooking up to my content management library because I think I had a few different libraries in different spots so I just decided to uninstall every single DAS, everything, and just start over from scratch. So this is my lost and file. This is my, these are files, lost and found. We got everything in these little different categories. And under anatomy. Now I have the stuff that is installed. And I should have I should have had the uh, the Genesis file, the Genesis eight starter pack installed. Um, and by the way, I'm 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 gonna close this out so you don't have to worry. You know, I keep saying you don't have to worry, uh, but I want you to see that the 3D. This I I understand a lot of the frustration because some of it is very much a lot of okay, uh, I have this uh, piece of software, but now I have to go ahead and now I have to go ahead and a file required by the, okay, so check this out. So a file required by the resource interactive lesson cannot be found. Check that file is correctly installed. The missing file is provided by the following part, Starter Essentials. Okay, so I don't know why it wasn't downloading from there, but I'm gonna double click onto this. And what this is doing, it's more than likely downloading from, <sighs> it's accessing Genesis, the Genesis Starter uh, Essentials, so that, and it's gonna download. So you see right now it's at 4%. So I'm going to end this right here and I'm going to let this totally download. We'll pick this back up on the other side. So I have Dash Studio opened up. And if you've never seen Dash Studio and this is your first time, this can be super overwhelming. But the way this is set up is going to remind us very much of a lot of 3D programs. I think one of the most obvious things to before we get into the differences, I want to look at the biggest similarity is this right here. 
Now over here we have, this is our viewport. It's even labeled right here. It's our viewport right there. Let me go ahead and <laughs> and actually so now I've uh, I've actually taken this down and rearranged the viewport in a way that I didn't want to so I got to drag this out here so let me see where do I want to put this at it's not gonna go up there I do apologize. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to drag this out. So <laughs> Dash Studio isn't really, it's not that set up for you to arrange things like that, as you can see. But this is our viewport, and it's giving me this little number up here. It's 16 by 9. This is the ratio that I want to see this in. So it's almost like, as if, if I were to put something in here and render it, it would render out in a 16 by 9 ratio. Down here we have a perspective grid, which I move this around. This is this is a representative of a ground plane. It's even got these little perspective lines here. For those of you that study that have studied perspective, this would be more like two point. This would be kind of a three point. And putting this right in the middle, this would be like a one point perspective. Now if you look, I was turning this with normally this is referred to as this is a navigation gizmo and over here you can see that these are clearly labeled it even has the cube that's kind of turning with here and you highlight this this is letting you know that this is giving you the right view now it's the front view we can turn this I'm just clicking and dragging left now it's going to give us a perfect left view now it's going to give us a top view but that really doesn't mean very much of anything right so what if we wanted to add something so i'm going to go up here to create and i want to add a very simple shape and when something is very simple, it is primitive. So I'm going to add a very primitive shape. So I'm going to add, looks like I'm going to add a, I don't want to add a sphere. I want to add a cylinder. So I'm going to add a cylinder. I'm going to hit accept. Now I'm going to zoom out here. And we now can see that right here is a cylinder. Let's add something else. Let's create a new, simple, primitive shape. And let's add a cube. I'll hit accept. And there's our cube right there. So we have these two shapes that are very simple. They are very primitive. And so they are called primitives because they are very basic shapes and many of you know you can make anything with very simple shapes and so 2d and 3d are very going to be very similar instead of you drawing out a cube to construct something and stacking cubes and interlocking them with cylinders etc you are going to uh, you would just do that with the cube and the cylinder respectfully Wow, that sounded really formal, didn't it? Uh, so these are primitive shapes, and there are a few different primitive shapes. Now, the biggest thing that I want you to take away from this is navigating with this little top gizmo here, a viewport, and uh, this perspective grid. This is a grid. It's a grid that's a floor. Let's go ahead and look at something else so we can see the similarities. I'm just going to hit pause. And so this is uh, it's an older version of Blender because I did download the new one, but this is my 3.0. So the thing about Blender is that you can just download newer versions. It won't get rid of your older version of Blender. 
uh, because this is version, I, you can have more than one version of Blender. But let's take a look at what's going on here. Look at this. This is a viewport. Now up here it says layout. It's just giving you, these are little tabs up here. But look, here's a grid. And I'm turning this around with this little gizmo here, except this one says Z, X, Y. There's negative X, there's negative Z. And so this is essentially the same thing. It just looks a bit different. So now if I go, if I want to add shift A, I want to add a cube. Well, then let's take a look at this. If I hit this X button, is it going to snap to this? Yeah, it does. It is snapping in what's called orthographic view. If I go Y, well, then that's kind of the left side. X is back to front. Negative Y is on the other side. And then I could just drag this and put this right back into perspective. This is a primitive. Right? And so if I go Shift A to add, so now you see this word here that says mesh. And well, that's a mesh. That is also, these are our primitive shapes within all of these are meshes. These are like little models. And so here's a plane. There's an icosphere. Kind of looks like a 50-sided Dungeons and Dragons dice. We've got our old friend, the cylinder here. It's not really that smooth. They've got it on different sides they got multiple sides but this is the exact same thing that you saw in DAS Studio we have these are the similar components this has our viewport with our grid and you can see that grid just extends way back there that 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 is extending like all the way back so we can have different views of this let's let's uh, and, and to close this out I just want to show you something else here so this is ZBrush, and I gotta update ZBrush. <laughs> I gotta update ZBrush. Uh, but if we look at ZBrush, then let's take a look at what's going on here. So let's do. Let's just go ahead and bring out this. Uh, let's bring out this uh, Z Sculpt tool here, or, or yeah, our Z. Uh, uh, I forgot what they're called. Z spheres. So now I've made this right here. Now instead, so we got a little something here, but since ZBrush is more of a sculpting tool, then we have this little head that gives you the same capability. And look, there is a grid down here. You're like, where's a grid? If I take it, well, that's dynamic perspective. If I take away the floor, you don't see the grid. But if I click onto the floor, then all of a sudden you see this and this is a sculpting software so with 3d you're gonna need uh, you are going to need a, some sort of viewport where all of the objects can be stored so that's very important and like I said you can just move all this around here So these are, that's the first thing that you uh, that I want to show you is the viewport. So we can we're starting to demystify this. You know that if it's a 3D model, it's going to have a viewport. It's going to have some little way of moving around here. It has some sort of little mechanism there, and it's usually going to have a grid that's going to give us some kind of perspective to show us which direction the model or the scene or the prop is in. All right, that is a viewport. So I'm going to see you in the next video. So we are looking at a model. So this model is just a pretty basic mannequin there. And this is a mesh. So it's a model, of course. And over here it has a fancy word. It says actor, right? It's 
go ahead and put a, let's grab some a wardrobe over here. Now, Daz 3D is a little different. We can double click onto things and the shorts will just pop up on them like magic. Crazy, right? Like, oh my goodness, how did that happen? Can you tell me if I just grab this shirt and put this on them? It'll happen like that too? Yes. Now, it's, it's obviously not perfect. Uh, you can uh, right click to things and you can fit this. I can fit the basic shirt too. Let's see, just, let's see if we'll, it'll clean. Let's see if this will clean this up. Let's go fit things. Boxers over there. I don't know. This is a little weird. Okay. Well, you, we could adjust that stuff. But let's pretend like this was perfect. <laughs> Uh, and so now we are in our viewport. We have our navigation little gizmo over here. We can see that there's a ground floor. We have a model and we have a mesh. Why would it be called a mesh? Well, we can view this model in different things. We can look at the wire bounding box. Why would you want to look at anything like this? Well, if you have a slower computer, that might be that might be a little bit better. There's solid bounding box. This turns everything into primitive shapes. We have wireframe mode. Now, let's go ahead and zoom into this wireframe mode so we can see that we have we have the tank top. That's an entirely separate thing. If I go up here to scene and I take off the this boxers and here this wiring is a mesh because it looks like a mesh, a net. It is a net that is draped over this imaginary figure. There's nothing on the inside of it, though, but it's a mesh. It's a mesh. It is something that is can be that can be added. So if it's added, it's an asset. It's also an asset. So is the boxers. So are the tank top. So is the tank top. Take that away. We can see that these are also, these are separate meshes. Yes, they are clothing. Yes, they are wardrobe. Yes, it is wardrobe. But if you are looking for something in some of the other pieces of software, like Unreal Engine, you would be looking at a folder that says meshes. It has different meshes to it. So anything that is going to be modeled in 3D, in Polygon 3D, and look again. See this? All of these are quads, even though some of them are... Where's my wire texture shaded? So let's take a look at this. These are all squares. These are all quads, even the ones that you may not think are quads. If we go down and zoom in, all of these are squares. Or should I say they are uh, not squares, but rectangular or square in nature. They have four sides, four sides. All of them. And so now you can see that since we can see both the lines and the model itself, well, the model is made up of the lines, but it does look like there is a netting all over this model. There's a netting on this model's body. There's a netting that's all over there. So that is a mesh. And that's what a mesh is. So when you see that word, you know that they are usually referring to a model of some sort. Let's take this a little step further and close this out. I'm going to hit pause. So here I am in Blender. We'll take a look at this. This looks like a terrain. This is a piece of terrain. And yes, that's exactly what it is. It's meant to be a piece of terrain. This is also a mesh because if I hit shift a, you see this, it says add and I have mesh planes, cubes, circles, icospheres, UV spheres, and so on. There's grid. There's a monkey, which is named Suzanne. It's blenders mascot. This is a landscape. This is Archimesh. 
So this is a architectural mesh that is part of Blender. It's bolt, discombobulator, rock generator. We can add some rocks. Take that out of there. So we got a rock over there. But if we go up to edit mode, well, this is a really dense mesh, right? And I and I and I made when I made the uh, the little vector, the points there. <laughs> I made them really huge, but if we zoom in, you can see that there is this netting around there. So we also will call this a mesh as we turn our gizmo up on the side here. And these are not supposed to be this big. I just have them for learning purposes. Right. So it's a knife tool. And so one of the other reasons why is if I wanted to add more geometry, I know this is getting a little bit ahead, but these quads are important because I could just split these quads down there and now I have more geometry so I can go in and sculpt a little bit more I'm adding more geometry and it makes it easier to manipulate things so there you go so that is what a mesh is all right see you in the next video so let's talk about materials I have this model loaded up here you can see she has on some boots <laughs> active wear and some hair uh, all of these are different components these are all separate models by the way uh, the shorts are separate the top is separate even the hair is separate and they're all attached from they're all attached to the genesis 3 female so if i like hit her hair let's say that i just hit the hair you can see that the hair is going to sit right on top of that and when you start the 3D model, now if you have a game model, more than likely everything is going to be sculpted as in one part. But it all depends. And I think much of it depends on what exactly that is. You can assemble the character, but once you put it together, then you're going to need to have, it's going to be all in one model. But when you're working with something like Daz, or even if you're going into something like ZBrush and you want to add clothing and accessories to your characters, it's separate models that you that you are putting on sometimes people are really talented and can just add it to the model themselves especially people that have been modeling for years and yes i said years uh, but let's take a look at materials so now what is a material exactly well let's start with some of the most obvious things we can go with this wardrobe and i'm sorry i can click onto the shorts here Let's click on the shorts and then I'm going to go over here. Dad Studio even gives us a tab that says materials. Now, here are all of the different materials that we can have for this model. So that means if I click on this blue, it just changed the material. Now, it could just be something as simple as a color change or it could be something a little bit more elaborate. Let's go with the uh, the storm boots. So now I have this selected, and I want to see if there's a boot material here. Let's see, I'm just gonna go down here. Oh wait, I'm going to another category, and I can go with wardrobe. I don't know if there's another boot material. Let's see here. So here's a different material. And I change that material. So we zoom in here, we can see that I have an entirely different material onto these boots. Now, can we, if I clicked on this glove material, what would happen? Well, not much. <laughs> right? So the materials are really going to be attached to this. So here we got these other boots right here. This is another material for the boots because someone took the time out to take apart this model and they made a map for the material. Now I do, so what are the surfaces here? Uh, and we can always change the material with certain things. 
you could change so look here where it says like velvet color velvet strength you could change a lot of things with materials and there are entire pieces of software that will allow you to make create materials so if I went ahead and grabbed hair now the thing about Dash 3D not everything is going to be compatible with let's go with hair no way actually let's I'm gonna take the hair and I will go with hair materials so this blue this should have worked let's see here let's see if I can do an iray preview so iray is a renderer I haven't gotten to that yet but we're gonna give it a second so it's giving you a rendered preview of what this could look like now for some now this blue did not work with this hair let's see if I can it changed it subtly. It didn't really change it a lot. Saw a little bit of a change here. So okay, so that changed it a lot more. And so that is what a material is. We all there's there's skin materials as well. Uh not really many that not that great skin materials, but let's see if we can do it says gene all materials. I don't know if it's going to do it or not. Oh, wait. i got to grab the Genesis female figure. Let's go back to materials. I'm going to go to skin. Let's see if this will change. Uh, well, actually, I don't think it did very much of anything. Because uh, I think that was already on Gene. But that is what a material is. We can go a little bit more with materials. And let's go ahead and I'm going to hit pause so I got this little cube here and we have a base color it's a material but what if I want to change it to something let's try and change it to this blue and I hit OK well that was a material I just did a color change and so let's go ahead I want to choose the Nvidia IRA it shouldn't be that much to so now I have this I have a material on here this IRA or I'm sorry the color that is a material so these are uh, these are different dials that you can use to control your materials and I'm gonna have well I, obviously there's a, a section on materials but if I bring up so right here where it says metallicy metal whoops where it says metal where did it go I messed up uh, <laughs> right here where it says where's metallicy at there it is. So it's on zero. So if I bring this up, I'm, I'm trying to make it look more metal. So let's bring this all the way up so we can have this look. It looks a little bit more metal than it was before. All right. So, and we got some other settings under here. Glossy reflectivity. Let's see if we could bring that up. See what happens. Not really that much of a change. Uh, and I'm trying to see if we could if we can really do uh, well our glossy color we could affect that but I don't want to get too deep into I want to have its own I want to really go in for for uh, so also this says PBR which is physically based renderer which essentially means it looks more real in a much easier way so back in the day, people had to have all of these different rendering recipes, as they were called. And it was super complex because computers were not as fast as they are. Now, pretty much everything that I see is PBR rendering, which means rocks are going to react to your lights like a rock would. A shiny car would react like a shiny car should react. Let me show you. I'm just going to hit pause. So... uh so I don't have to wait and load things okay so I just downloaded this car that I have I'm gonna click onto this and I just hit delete that's all I did now you're probably like what is this tone mapper options environment options Dash Studio now when you import certain things it's giving you 
some light rendering options. Uh, let's go with it's our default car. Importing files. Uh, let's just hit OK. It's been a while since I did this. Let's go back to texture shaded. So sometimes when you load things up, they don't let's try this again. What? Select an item from the scene. Oh, okay, I think I'm not in loading in the model. <sighs> let's see. Am I not doing something right here? Hold on. I'm going to hit pause. This is the kind of stuff that you go through. Okay. <laughs> so I figured out what was going on. So I was hitting default because I'm thinking that's the model itself. What down here you have to put on predator. Like I had to literally click on the. This is the main model and all the rest of this are options. <laughs> all right. So. Let's go and hit NVIDIA iRay. So now we can see that that is here. If I went ahead and painted this, click on this. So now it changed materials, right? Change materials. Change the headlights to yellow. I changed the material of that light, and that's what that is. This is changing the materials that we are looking at. Let's change these rims to match. So now we change this 3D model. We change the rims. We change the color. Let's, let's go ahead and white pearl because uh, I love that color. And you see how shiny that is reacting to the light reacting to the environment so this is what a material is we can put these different materials on things and uh, and that's what we can do so that's a material and materials can be applied to anything some things are specifically mapped to certain models and if you want to change the material there are people that take the model maps the mesh the 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 actual modeling part of it and they paint it in Photoshop or change it in Photoshop or some kind of photo manipulating program this was a little bit long but hopefully you have an understanding of materials please if you have any questions uh, put them in the Q&A section. This class is going to be a class that I, I really feel like it's going to grow because if you're if you don't see something or you have a question, someone else may have that same question. So I would urge you to go ahead and just ask the question. And, and if it's a really good question, well, I'm going to answer it anyway. But if it's something that I think needs a video, then I'll, I'll add a video. So, all right, I'll see you in the next video. So let's talk about, um, I rendered this under this thing called IRA Renderer. There are different, what are called render engines. And there are a lot of them. Some of them are built in. Some of them are entirely separate from the pieces of software that you have. But let's take a look at DAZ and let's look at our render settings. Now, there are different settings up here it says engine right so Daz used to have this engine called well they still have it uh, 3d delight now if I hit 3d delight and hit render renders pretty quick and it gives me a, a, a pretty decent image there right it's not bad it's a nice little car and it's a P I, I'm saving this essentially as a PNG file, but let's look at, uh, and so we got some general settings here. That's really small. Let's put this in 
Ultra HD, but I'm going to render under the 3D Delight. I'm going to hit render again because I want this to be bigger. And so now this is much bigger. Didn't take that long and it renders out. It renders this car based on this engine, right? So this is a huge, ginormous picture. And I don't know if I could scale this out. Let me see here. So you can see this is a pretty big image. Right? That's a pretty big image. And so that is this. This took the information from the 3D model. All of the information from the materials. And it rendered this out. Now, this was the old way. But if we look at that, let's just change the rendering. That was a little bit too big, I think, right? Let's look at this. And so now, if we compare this to the iRay model, it doesn't, doesn't quite look like that. So that would mean that if I use this iRay render, let's see what happens. So there's some other ones over here, but let's just compare this to the NVIDIA iRay. Now I have now you're gonna need an NVIDIA card for the iRay to work. Let's hit render. And if I click over to studio, so it's going in iterations. Uh, and this is actually a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. My goodness. Uh, so it's at 84%. Now it's at 94. Because uh, this used to take f a, a while. But now it's not even done. And we can already see. This is given, and, and the other thing about iRay has given us this preview. So now this looks like this. Yeah, let's see if I can do another render here. So we got this, comparatively speaking. So we got these two versions right here. So if you look over here, not we I can't like these seats right here, these seats look like plastic. <laughs> like it really does look like plastic. Uh, but if you look over here, this looks a little bit more this looks way more realistic. This looks like a little bit more of a toy to me. Uh, the wheels, the the actual brakes, uh, the brakes in here. It does not look, I mean, it's just not very, uh, it's just not very, it just doesn't look very car like. Let's, let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, save these. Hold on. All right. So this is the 3D Delight or 3, yeah, 3D Delight. And we look, we can just look and see this. This looks very plasticky. I mean, it really does look like plastic. Now, back in when I rake when 3D came out, it's like, okay, this looks great, right? Looks great. That looks way better. Look, there's not even as much light information. There's hardly no light information. It's it just looks like a toy that's just sitting somewhere in a room. If we look back here, this looks like plastic. This looks like really super hard plastic over here and I didn't even really put it in and I didn't do I didn't put it in an HDRI uh, which is an environment map but if we look now yeah this that does look a little bit shinier but I can see the tire treads look those brakes you can see the the brakes and and it even has like a little bit of a brushed feel to that this white part is blown out a little bit because I didn't make any adjustments but Seats still look a little plasticky. They just do. And I also think this is an older model, but this does look way better than that. There's that. And keep in mind that that was supposed to be black. This is supposed to be a black car. Now, this showed up pretty well, but this had a lot of light information to it. But you can see there's like little reflections. So there's like little reflections like it's sitting in an environment. Not here. This right here it almost looks like there's like a little building in the background because it pretty much is. It's got reflecting from the sunlight. So that's the power of a renderer. A renderer 
And let me show you really quick some options out there. Okay, so uh, iRay, that's what we used in DAS. iRay has its own renderer. And it comes with DAS. It's an extension in something like uh, Character Creator or uh, Real, the Real Illusion software you can add on iRay. Uh, and so iRay is a separate renderer. Also, there is Octane, which is another renderer. And all of these, and, and different things like Blender has Cycles Renderer, and I'm drawing a blank now. Uh, Blender has other, well, let's just open up Blender so that I can remember. Uh, and then Pixar also, you can buy Pixar's renderer. It's called Render Man. It's, <laughs> as you could tell, let's see. It's, so it says get Render Man. <laughs> get a quote today so it ain't cheap uh, but it is there right and so let's see what we got here you can get a free trip you you can rent it let's see what happens if you buy it 12 month maintenance plan is uh 700 euro so this is now don't now this does not mean so i got daz that has a renderer in it but if i typed in blender cycles render and so blender has its own renderer uh, it has cycles there's freestyle and uh, and the real-time renderer is wait a minute I gotta I gotta pull it up because I'm just drawing a blank today I apologize trying to keep all this stuff going on here Let's go to here to where's my rendering tab at? So Eevee. Oh, Eevee is the other renderer. So you have Eevee, you have Workbench, you have Cycles. And so you have renderers already built into Blender. And so, yeah, if you wanted to buy another renderer, you could. But once again, and I'm not trying to make you guys get Blender, but the Cycles renderer and these other renderers, they are excellent. So that is what a what a render a renderer is. So it's going to take in a lot of the it's 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 taking in a lot of the light environment, the materials, whether you have a shader on top of it, uh, and there is going to be a difference between a lighter and a shader. So that's what that is. I'm going to stop talking. I will see you in what's called the next video. Alrighty, so I'm gonna kinda diverge a little bit here, just for a second, because as I record this, it's kinda interesting because this happens to be the day after Unreal has all of their new stuff. So Unreal has things that are free for the month and I figured why don't I just show you guys this uh, so this is a, a VFX tool so this is called fluid ninja make your own VFX effect assets look at this we got player material what player materials when you flip books with player material. okay so looks like we have volume fog you can make your own volume fog uh, oh, it looks like we got like a, a 3D pixelated visualizer. This is interesting. All right, and uh, it's free. So it's free. Okay. Look at that. So what I'm going to do actually is what we wind up doing is we just go add to cart because we want to put it in the cart. So now I'm going to go back. And I, I think that I probably showed this earlier, but also it's important to go back again. It's important to show you that is my microphone on. Ooh. All right. Uh, 
so it's important to to show you that this is a real thing so over here we have a point and click adventure toolkit what does that mean uh that means well let's read it uh, the point and click adventure toolkit is extens is an is an extensive gameplay framework which includes all the functionality tools and ui needed to create your own point and click adventure games the toolkit has been crafted with many easy to use actions and gameplay system featuring rich dialogue interaction interactable items and much more to bring your adventures to life so if you want to make your own point and click game this is this this is the framework for doing that just plug your stuff in we're going to add that to cart plot twist we're going to add everything to cart cuz that's how we get down uh and so uh look insta deform component uh it says instantly adds visual deformation cap capabilities to your vehicles and more let's go ahead and look at that also we got uh if something crashes looks like we uh we, we have that i'm gonna add to cart there going on a shopping spree so i'm going to tell you actually why i even came to unreal look at this a wild west city what Look at that. Look at that. Look at this. What? Of course we're going to add that to cart. Now, this is not just about me, you watching me shop. Uh, and here's a turn-based RPG template. Look at this. It's free, so you can make your own turn-based RPG, just like uh, what is, what is the, whatever that ubiquitous video game is that every YouTuber seems to be promoting. <laughs> I, I know what it is, I just don't want to say it, because I, I don't need to uh, do that. Uh, so I'm going to go back and... And then, I'm going to go to my cart, look at this, we're going to go to checkout... So in case you think so, I'm going to place the order. I think I did this before, but I want to show you again. Because I'm wondering, as we are, as I'm getting ready to teach you what a shader is, is there a tune shader for Unreal Engine? Now, I know that they have them there. Oh, look. Cell shader. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look. Let's see what this looks like here. So this more, looks more like a comic book shader. Uh, I'm not really... So this... So, okay, so this is what the Unreal Engine would look like, your character. But if you put on the Toon shader, it's to make it look like more like an animated cartoon. Or an anime. So what a shader is going to do is change your entire... It's going to change the entire look. And let's see here. Let's go. Let's see if we can find a better shader. So let's go with anime shader, maybe. These are kind of older. There doesn't seem to be anything really new here, but I at least wanted to try and check. So let's try with cell shader. So the look that we are going for. Hmm. Oh, cartoon cell shader in materials. That doesn't look very cell shaded. This is close. Oh, okay, here we go. So stylized rendering system. So, uh, so quickly and easily cell shade your characters, objects, and visual effects and add up to 25 different customizable styles and outlines to your scene. This sounds awesome. Um, the SRS, Stylized Rendering System, allows you to create a variety of dynamic style, dynamic art styles for your projects, mimicking the art style found in anime, cartoons, or manga with little to no technical knowledge is required. Might actually buy this. Uh, but let's take a look at it. Because this is, this is the easiest way to tell you what a shader is as opposed to a material. Material is going directly on to your models, etc., like we saw. The shader can change that entire 
the entire thing to look like a cartoon or a comic book or a graphic novel or a manga. So you look up here. So let's look at this. So this says standard down the bottom. It's metallic. So this top looks like a classic anime, the white sphere next to it. That's got it's got uh, some lines in the shadow work. But right next to that, it has the dot matrix pattern that you see in a lot of manga and that you used to see in, in a bunch of old school that you used to see in a bunch of old school comic books from back in the day when they were still on newsprint. And right next to it, this bright one is a little bit more of a modern anime look, a little bit more detailed. And so we can see right here the characters. So now when you guys see some of the anime that's on Netflix, these are 3D models, but, but what you are seeing and I want to show you some other so look at this so this particular sh shadow or this particular tune shader if we look at the one on the left it has all the tune shading to it it casts shadows but it also gives you this black outline so a lot of the the 3d anime that you see like I said on Netflix and if you're watching Crunchyroll if you notice that oh this looks kind of 3d and I know that some anime fans don't particularly like that, but if you don't, but the the one thing that anime has been doing for years now is having 3D backgrounds with 2D art. And you can use a combination of both materials and and the, so there's all kinds of things that you can do with this. This is actually a pretty cool shader. I am going to heart this because I want to save it because it might go on sale. Don't tell anybody I said that. But let me, and let me just show you uh, uh, something. So I'm going to hit pause real quick. All right. So in Unity, there's also a game and there is a, uh, a also a tune shader. You can have these. They have these in. Uh, sorry, let me pull that up there. I'm not accepting any cookies. How dare you? <laughs> Uh, but check this out. So this is also a shader. It is changing the look of your game. If you want to have a, a game that looks like it's sketched, then you can do that. There's you can also do this in Blender. And we're going to make a simple when we get to the a section on under the section on going deeper into it. One of the things I want to do, I'm going to download Blender. Don't worry, you're not going to have to do it just yet. Uh, but you are going to download and we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make your own very simple anime style shader so that you can have a much better understanding of it. And I just wanted to show you these in real time that are real examples of it. Uh, because as, as some of you know, who are already my students, I don't like to be vague in anything. I like to tell you things specifically and step by step. So I figured the best way of doing this was to actually show you and 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 one more thing i'm going to close out with all right so just to drive this home this is from a 2006 movie called renaissance and it's a it's originally a french language film i have not seen this since 2006 but the way that this animated film looks these are 3d models and it's a noir film and this obviously has a very sin city style shader for all my comic book fans out there and yes the movie is from a comic book this is this has a shader on it there are without a doubt shaders on this it's part material it's 2d mixed with 3d everything to match there's some sort of shader that they used for uh, for uh, uh for arcane sorry draw another blank there so there's a shader for that to make it look painted this is from uh, uh, oh my God, the Jaegers. This is from Pacific Rim. I believe it's Pacific Rim Black on Netflix. These are at, so you see the background and the animated characters. They have a shader on them to make it look like it's 2D. Same thing with Ultraman and Voltron. They are 2D. Voltron is is 2D, but the the lion itself. If we look at this lion, this is a 3D model, but it has a has a shader on it to make it look to match with the 2D. So that's what a shader is. And there are shaders that can do many different things, but it's gonna change the overall 
property and look of whatever it is that you're doing, be it your video game, movie, or TV show. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. So I want to just make you aware of some of the other softwares that are out there that are that are pretty specific to certain things. And we're not going to download all this. There's just no way that that's not going to happen. Uh, some of them can be very expensive. And, and the reason why I'm doing this is to not scare you off of 3D. But sometimes all of it is overwhelming. And there's there seemed to be, at least when before I knew anything, there seemed to be this sense that everybody's buying all this expensive software and you need all of this stuff in order to make anything or to be taken seriously as a 3D artist. Uh, there, There's all this kind of, uh, oh, well, you just need this piece of software that's $1,400, like, like, <laughs> like that. That's sort of, uh, I just want to let you know that you're not losing your mind. Yes, there is a lot of overwhelming information and software out there. But this course, again, slowly but surely starting to make sense. I will be repeating certain concepts over and over again because so much of this is intertwined. So here we have Marvelous Design. Are we like, what is that? So the best realistic cloth making program for 3D artists. So you can make clothing in 3D. This software is specifically made for 3D or for clothing. And what is this monthly prop challenge? Okay. And so so let's th this is marvelous designer. And yes, Blender does have a, a version of of doing this. Well, let me hit pause real quick. Okay. So uh so there is a way for you to make 3D clothing. And they got all kinds of stuff here and just for so there's a license to that and I mean as you can see it's not it's, it's not exactly well that's enterprise oh my goodness okay so there's a monthly subscription and there's a one year prepaid for like 280 bucks but if this is what something that you're interested in doing and by the way if you're a fashion designer or, or something like that this is another way to get your designs out there uh, then we have a very specific piece of software like ZBrush. ZBrush is a modeling software. Uh, if we went to ZBrush being a, a, a dedicated 3D modeling software, yeah, it has some other features. So if we look at the features, uh, people use it for all, for 3D printing. Uh, now they got capabilities for hard surface modeling. I just download if you see in the corner, I just had to download the newer version of it. Uh, all kinds of things, all kinds of ways, uh, quick access to XMD toolbox. That's interesting. Uh, so there is ZBrush and ZBrush. It does say not secure. I don't know why. <laughs> I really don't know why it's, it's it is a little bit disturbing, but uh, and, and, cause I don't want to show any of my personal info, but I do want to show you this because ZBrush is seven or eight hundred bucks. But, but there is also ZBrush Core Mini. There used to be Sculptress. They put Sculptress into ZBrush itself. There are different versions of ZBrush. I think they're still doing the ZBrush Core, but this is ZBrush Core Mini. And the cool thing about it is that you get all these brushes. You get a symmetry tool, you get base meshes. I'm going to go through what all that is. Uh, there's a viewer mode. Whoa, it looks like you get the uh, ZPR projects. You can save them as their own proprietary ZPR files. And it's 100% free. Now it's limited, but it's free. And it's a great way to get your feet wet. So there's also now i know that there's unity game engine and i've never downloaded godot but there are plenty of tutorials on godot it is a game engine uh you can do 2d or 3d and if we go under the features tab this is a this is an open source piece of software you can animate things you can script those of you that like that sort of thing 
scares me though but there are specific other engines out there that are most game engines at this point are free uh, there is unreal i think cry engine is also free And so that's that is uh, interesting to to know if you don't want to for whatever reason if you don't want to download you, uh, Unreal because you may have an older computer and it may be too much too big for you or you may not meet the minimum system requirements. Uh, so, and this is Realusion, which has some very specific pieces of software. So I want to look at this in particular because right here is the character creation system. Now, yes, you can sculpt a 3D character if you want to, but if you just want to create characters that look like this, it's just a series of slides. Now, I have Character Creator 3 there on Character Creator 4. Character Creator 3, it kept giving me this message where I had to go in, and, and, and I'll open up this for you, but there's face capture, there's all kinds of little slides here. There are modeling morphs. Uh, you can take a, a picture of a photograph and turn it into a 3D model. And so this is a, and it works with all of these different softwares. So you don't have to sit there and sculpt everything like you would have had to do before. If you want to create a bunch of characters or some really horrific characters sorry about that if those of you that are faint of heart I do apologize I didn't know that, that was gonna pop up it's just I mean you can make a monster essentially or a woman with or some skeleton sort of not skeleton some sort of fish scaled skinned uh, uh, woman uh, for a game or whatever and they give you a free trial too so there's also specific motion capture software, like there's flat out different sort of things that will allow you to do motion capture. That's a very, very specific thing. So you can do your animation, you can do that for movies, if you're making a 3D film. Uh, and this is just one of them. There's many different companies. Now, uh, we also have a, a probably the most, I think it's the most popular VFX software it is Houdini so Houdini this is used in films and TV shows and all kinds of things but it says a node based workflow so those are nodes these are nodes they are little boxes that you connect to other boxes to get different results and they are everywhere and says intuitive. I'm I'm just laughing because I'm looking at this and it says intuitive, artist friendly tools. Uh, while while the nodes are what makes Houdini unique and give it power. Yes, there are lots of viewport and shelf tools that allow blah blah blah. So it's funny because all of the tutorials that I've just glanced at on Houdini because I wanted a deeper understanding of it, and I'm talking about from years ago from when I first heard I heard of it. There is, uh, everyone says that it's notoriously hard to learn. <laughs> it's like, it's, oh, it's artist friendly. Uh, but there's VFX and simulation. And so it does a lot of node based things. Now, there are plenty of other softwares out there. I think if we go to, let me hit pause real quick. So if we go over here to the Foundry or foundry.com, there is the Nuke family. Uh, and it's a bunch of different software, but this is uh, compositing and editorial review for VFX artists. So this is a, a dedicated compositing, meaning putting everything together for the final image. And they also have Moto, which Moto is another modeling animation. To, it's an all-in-one software. And I forget what Katana is. Oh, uh... Katana look for and lighting power. Okay, so it's a look development and lighting software. So it's part of your, it can be part of your pipeline. And we're seeing into the Spider-Verse. There you go. 
so there are a lot of things that are for you that want to make films. But if you if you think about this for a second, let's just say we want to buy this. <laughs> So Katana Interactive and Katana Render. So this is a few thousand dollars for a year. But if you were to take all of these softwares uh, and you wanted to just, let's like say the Nuke family here, and you wanted to make a film, if you think about it, it has never been cheaper to make a film. Even though you might be saying, my goodness, buying something for $11,000, but if you're making a movie and you have a budget of a certain amount of money, yes, you can do a lot. There's a lot of these things that you can use uh, for free. But what I also want to say is that this is still cheaper than what it used to be years ago, right? So there's never been a better time to be a movie maker, a filmmaker, a creative, a game maker, a game designer. And also, we can't leave this out. I know some people feel certain ways about Adobe, but Substance Designer used to be its own thing. Substance Designer is a way to design your own materials. And and when we get to the next section, we're going to download that every look. Well, you as you probably can look down and see, we're going to download different things that are going to be open source and accessible. So we have there's designer so there's substance painter which allows you to paint on top of 3d models it is specifically made for painting painting on 3d models that's what it's made for and there is now the substance modeler i've never tried this before this is newer uh your 3d sculpting workshop on desktop and in vr so you also can work 3D and VR. I've never tried it. I had a bad experience with my my PS4, the VR headset. It gave me a headache. My eyes were hurting. I, I, I can't deal with VR. I'm just not. Because I also wear glasses, too. Uh, and there's, uh, there's Designer, which lets you design different uh, substances, lets you design different things, but lets you design all kinds of different materials. When they say material, the industry standard for material authoring. So you're going to author these materials. You're going to create materials. But I'm going to show you in the next section software that we're going to download and take a look at. But we want to download all of the things because I want to make sure that you can. I am choosing things that are more lightweight and that won't be taxing on your system. Nothing that should not require too much of a free trial. I'm trying to go with software that is free and open source and has known to be reliable. So I don't want you to, to, to be nervous, afraid, scared, apprehensive. This course, again, I'm just reminding you, it's about getting over that fear. In order to do that, we're going to have to download some software. I'm going to see you in the next video. Or I'm sorry, in the next section. So I am going to do something uh, the, and there is an assignment at the end of this, right? But I want to walk you through this because this is really important. This can be a, a something that will stop you from downloading a soft a piece of software. And I'm on Unreal Engine. This is this is the hardware and software specifications. I'm going to talk you through this now. For those of you that know, don't worry about it. This is this is going to be the some of the most fundamental things that you can you're probably just gonna be like uh, who doesn't know that but a lot of people don't know what they have in their computer they don't uh so let's first of all uh, I'm, I'm let's do windows first windows the operating system windows 10 64 bit now do you know if you have a 64 bit system or a 32 bit system that's a big 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 deal in 2022 it's telling you that it needs to be on Windows 10, not Windows 8, not Windows 7, and not Windows XP, not some sort of updated version of that. If you do not have Windows 10, 64, now this is recommended, and I'm going to go to the to minimums in a second, but this is what is recommended for it to run smoothly. The processor, you just need a quad core. 
That's that's most people should have some sort of quad core processor. If you have a dual core, you're it's it's not it's not going to work how you want it to work if it works at all. And we'll get to how to find that. For those of you that don't know, Intel or AMD, that is the processor. Intel is a company that makes processors, so so is AMD, affectionately returned, referred to as Team Blue and Team Red, uh, 2.5 gigahertz or faster. The amount of memory, not the hard drive, but the memory, the RAM, you need a minimum of 8 gigabytes. If you have 4 gigabytes, it's not going to work. It could, but chances are it isn't. So, graphics card, DirectX, 11 or 12 compatible graphics card. So, something that can download DirectX. It's a, like a graphics processing software, something, super technical stuff. But most computers should be able to have, you should be able to have graph, DirectX 11 or 12. If, you, if you're playing, ga if you're a gamer, all this stuff is is like a no-brainer to you I get it but not everybody knows and so operating system Windows 10 now this minimum software requirements not very many not very many right they still they're still saying Windows 10 direct X when end user runtime June 2010 uh, all right oh and well that's develop developing with the engine but you that's what you need Let's look at Mac OS X. So you need the latest Mac OS X. So you need to be running Monterey. Uh, and I'm, I'm waiting on the new one to drop, which I forgot what that is. Because I also have a Mac. I have a MacBook as well. And the processor, you need a quad core Intel. Now, I don't know if, the, if this is going to be compatible with the M2 chip that Apple has. Uh, and the memory is eight gigabytes of RAM. And I'm trying to look to see. I, it should be fine with the M2 chip, but I don't know. Don't quote me on that. And Linux, I'm not a Linux operator, but uh, the operating system uh, Ubuntu 20. Point, I know a little bit about Linux, but not that much. So, oh, warning, as of... Unreal Engine 5. It's not compatible with Unreal Engine. This will be a fixed feature in a future release. So in 5.0, well, I guess I guess it's just a, might be a no go for right now as of this recording. Always check back. Uh, and and Linux people are you, you guys are way smarter than me, so, <laughs> so you're gonna know. <laughs> you're gonna know. So if I look at this. So I'm going to compare this to what I actually have on my, what my actual PC is. And if you go under system about, you are going to get your, your, your specific, your device specifications. So I have an Intel Core i9 processor. Uh, it's 2.6 gigahertz. And it is, it has, uh, this one has, you can just always copy and paste and look up this, but I know for a fact that I have 18 cores, right? I don't have four, I don't have six, I have 18. Uh, my installed RAM, the requirement is eight, I have 64, right? And for graphics, I know that my graphics card is a, I have a GTX card. Now, I don't have an RTX card. Uh, my, I have a GTX 1080. I have a GTX 1080, and right now RTX is for ray tracing. But it doesn't mean that I can't play a game or use software. It just means that, I mean, I've had this PC for a while. I bought it for a reason, so I wouldn't really have to upgrade it for a long time. So what I want you to do is go and see where you are. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to upload it because there's nothing that I can do but if you guys are on a laptop and I, and I really do have to say this as your instructor as someone that has been doing and working with software and computers and digital art and 3d art 
for years now. Get the most powerful laptop that you can get or you get a or get the most powerful MacBook that you could afford. And if you're going the PC route, my goodness, it does not hurt to get a desktop so that you can always upgrade things because sometimes you have older systems and they can't be upgraded. They can't hold any more memory. They can only hold eight gigabytes of RAM, <laughs> right? They don't have any more open slots for more RAM. You cannot upgrade the processor. You can customize a lot of stuff with a desktop PC, but a laptop is way more difficult and certain things you just you're just not going to be able to upgrade. You can upgrade your you usually should be able to upgrade your RAM, but sometimes your processor and everything else it doesn't make a difference if you upgrade the RAM. It's not yeah, you'll be able to put the RAM the 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 RAM card in there, but it's not going to make it really any faster because your processor isn't faster. If you have a dual core, I mean that's not you 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 are going to have to put you might have to put everything on lower settings and hope for the best until you get a new uh until you get a new machine. And I just say this not to discourage you, but just to let you know that it can be discouraging when you're when your laptop or your desktop many of you might be coming from an office background and you may have just needed an office computer these computers if depending on how old it is it it's it doesn't hold a slot for a, a real graphics card even a, an, an inexpensive graphics card which i don't think that's a thing still now at this point but i just want to let you know find out what your minimum specs are and in the next uh, section we're going to download some stuff that I think should be very lightweight so that we can and, and I want to explain and talk through these things for you all right I'm gonna stop talking I will see you in the next video or in the next section again for real this time all right